How's it going everybody? Thanks for joining me here on Outside. Today I am inside and I'd like to talk to you guys about hognose snakes. They're all the rage and I'd like to get into why that is. So we'll get this out of the way nice and early. Hognose snakes play dead. It isn't necessarily uncommon in nature for things to play dead. You probably have heard of playing possum, which is of course in reference to the Virginia opossum, which also plays dead. And biologists, of course, uh, we have a fancy way or fancy term for playing dead called thanatosis. I think playing possum or playing dead works perfectly fine, no matter what you want to call it. Essentially what's happening when a hognose snake or any other animal is playing dead is they're trying to make themselves seem as unpalatable and as unappetizing as possible. And so as a hognose snake is playing dead, it isn't uncommon for it to crap all over itself and maybe throw up a meal, commit to all types of theatrical behaviors. And it is definitely entertaining. And I'm sure if you clicked on this video, you expected to see a hognose snake playing dead. So let's get that out of the way. It dead is pretty dead. <laughs> So hognose snakes belong to the genus Heterodon, and if you break that word down, hetero means different and don means tooth. This is actually in reference to the fact that they have two primary types of teeth in their mouth. They have the normal teeth that you would associate with any snake that they use to bite and latch onto things, and then they also have an enlarged pair of teeth uh, in the back of their mouth on the upper jaw, and they use those, believe it or not, to envenomate their prey. So a lot of people would be surprised to know that hognose snakes are indeed venomous. However, it's worth noting, and this is perhaps the biggest take home message of this entire video, they are indeed harmless to humans. So those teeth are actually adapted to deal with the type of prey that they like to consume, which we'll get into in a minute, but they are indeed venomous. And I think that's one of the reasons they're such awesome snakes they're sort of cryptically venomous and um yeah i just think that's one of the really amazing traits about these guys so we actually have four species of hognose here in the united states there is the eastern hognose snake heterodon platyrhinos there is the southern hognose snake heterodon simus which is found in the southeastern united states there is the Mexican hognose snake, Heterodon canerlii. And then last but not least, there is Heterodon nasicus, which is the Western hognose snake, which you guessed it, is found further out west. They all differ to some degree morphologically. I would argue that a lot of the differences are pretty subtle. So one of the things you can look at to tell them apart is how upturned their snouts are, <clears throat> the, um, the amount of blotches that they have on their sides and some of their patterning the uh, color of the underside of the snake is also important but i would say if you're lucky enough to encounter a hognose snake and you want to know what kind it is that you're looking at simply refer to a range map because there isn't a ton of overlap between the different species there is some between heterodon simus the southern hognose snake and uh, heterodon platyrhinos the eastern hognose but there's a good chance that you could tease out which species you're looking at simply by referring to a range map. In regard to their appearance, they are a mid-sized snake. Wouldn't call them big, wouldn't call them small. If they existed in Southeast Asia, we'd probably consider them to be small because Southeast Asia has all the gigantic species over there. They don't get, say, as long as a rat snake, and they're definitely not tiny like a ringneck, but they sort of fall in that in-between range few feet, that's about it. The most glaring and obvious feature of a hognose snake is where it gets its name from, of course, and that is its upturned snout or hog-like nose. And it's a really cool morphological feature that they use to shovel away substrate. So in regard to hognose snake activity 
and sort of how they move about in the environment, they actually spend a considerable amount of time underground. And so they use that upturned snout to sort of shovel away any sand or, or substrate that, that they need to get into. They can use it to excavate previously made burrows by another animal. And that's what they're named after. Hognose snakes occupy a wide variety of habitats and that's to be expected because they have such a wide range. The four species stretch, you know, from New England all the way out west. And so they do occupy a lot of different types of habitats. They exist in a heterogeneous landscape and so that's to be expected. However, I would say some of the most important components to hognose habitat, regardless of where they're at, is the abundance of loose substrate. So earth that they can move around and get into and dig into. So sand is fantastic, loose soil. Um, all those things really are important to hognose snakes. And in general, they're, they, they tend to occupy more open habitats, I would say. These habitat types are not only important for supporting them, but it's also important for supporting what they like to eat. And that is probably one of the coolest aspects of heterodon that I'd like to talk to you guys about. So in nature, we see two primary feeding strategies. It's definitely a spectrum, but there are two primary strategies where there are dietary generalists, which will eat a wide variety of different types of prey. And then there are dietary specialists, which hone in on a particular type of prey. And hognose snakes, at least the Eastern hognose snake, falls into the latter category. And for whatever reason, they have a very, very, very strong affinity for toads. Now, if you're like me, you love toads, and I understand that, but everything in nature has to eat, and it just so happens that hognose snakes, or at least the eastern hognose snake, really loves to eat toads, and that's just the way it is. The other species, actually, it's sort of a misconception that hognose in general are specialists. Um, in digging through the literature, I found that they do hone in on particular types of prey elsewhere, but not necessarily toads. So I've seen everything from uh, Western hognose snakes eating lots of lizards and turtle eggs to, you know, Southern hognose snakes also eating a lot of lizards and say spadefoot toads. So there's some variety there. And to my understanding, Eastern hognose snakes are actually the most specialized of the four. It's really fascinating in ecology to me when a species or a group of species have come to specialize in a particular type of prey. I just think it's fascinating. And to bring things full circle, so earlier I mentioned that they have two enlarged fangs or two enlarged teeth in the back of their mouth, and I said that they aid them in digestion. So one of the toads, one of the strategies a toad has to defending itself from being eaten is it blows itself up real big and so the teeth of a hognose snake not only injects that venom which aids them in in digestion they also aid in popping or deflating toads whichever term makes you feel better so as the toad fills itself up with air and the snake goes to basically swallow the toad whole those enlarged teeth will actually aid in popping the toad or deflating it so that it can get it down a little easier. It's very gruesome, I admit. <laughs> um, it isn't pretty, but nature isn't pretty. So hognose snakes are what we call an egg-laying species. There are other reproductive strategies, and I think some people would be surprised to know that there are live-bearing snake species. So. Uh, the vipers, aside from Bushmasters, will actually give birth to live young, and other species do it as well, even garter snakes. There are plenty of species that give birth to live young, but the sort of traditional strategy of laying your eggs in the environment and, you know, letting them hatch and, and incubate, that is the strategy that the hognose snake applies. Typically, mating occurs in the spring and then the eggs are laid some weeks later in the summer and they typically hatch in the fall or late summer. 
And so then the young are left to basically find a place to hibernate for the winter. And this is definitely a constraint for hognose species that are in more colder climates. And so the newborn snakes have to sort of rush to find a place to hibernate. And yeah, it can be really tough for baby snakes. That'll be a common theme in these videos that I'll sort of state over and over is that first winter can be pretty tough on, on baby snakes and it's definitely no different for hognose. And I have to say, man, baby hognose snakes, newborn hognose snakes are absolutely adorable. If you're looking for a way in to have, you know, more warm feelings towards snakes, I would definitely encourage you to Google baby hognose snakes because they are absolutely adorable. So yeah, I think that covers most of the important information regarding hognose snakes. Uh, to leave you with my impression of them, I have to say they are definitely one of my favorite types of snakes to encounter in the wild. And it's not just because of their theatrics. I actually, I sort of have a different perspective on them playing dead. <clears throat> it is a response to stress. And so by a hognose snake playing dead in front of me, it does mean that I have stressed it out to a great degree and so I try to not provoke that behavior not to say that I haven't obviously I wouldn't have been able to show you the video if uh, if I hadn't provoked that behavior in the past but yeah I think between their morphology and you know their colors and just the types of places that they like to to inhabit and the ephemerality of them and how they're only around for a few pockets of time throughout the year, I think is just uh, super appreciable. And they're definitely one of my favorite types of snakes to find here in Pennsylvania and elsewhere, honestly. So that's it guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Hit the like button, share please, hit the subscribe button, that would mean a lot to me. I appreciate you guys enduring my snake nerdiness. And until next time, I hope you can get out, enjoy nature wherever you are. You know, go find all the things and take it all in. But until next time, take care.